We've got another thing to take apart. This time it's Sony Quad Video Monitor. So that's four independent video monitors in one 2U rack mount enclosure. And when you screw it into the rack, you can tilt it slightly, which is convenient. So this will be used for monitoring feeds from various cameras that are going into your switcher or other lower priority things and then there'll be some bigger monitors there showing the program and preview similar to those ones that we looked at before like that a couple of those mounted above for showing the main stuff so we're going to take this apart well we'll try it out first and we'll take it apart see what's going on inside it come with this power supply which it's all been conveniently labelled so you know what it does. Ah, yeah, so that's the model number. It's a Sony LMD4420. It's 12 volt input. This interesting non-standard plug. Typical Sony. And there, and then it's got these little hooks so you can you know, restrain it so it doesn't get ripped out accidentally. That's just a standard switch mode power supply. Is the rating information. Again, made in Korea. I guess there's lots of Sony stuff made in Korea. The other monitor we looked at was. So it's got standard in and out auto terminating composite video. And then it's got this option in which you can get an SDI decoder that plugs on there. Looking in the service manual, that outputs a S video signal, which then goes into here, into the monitor, and then there's a signal enable pin to switch it to that input and it's got remote I'm not sure exactly what remote does but one of the things would be turn on the tally lights when the signal on there is going live it's been pretty rough treated the original knobs presumably were those but only one of those remains and some of these extenders are damaged or snapped off completely. Most of them are still okay. I don't think any of the pots in there have been wrecked. But yeah, I suppose you can get more of these if you want and replacement knobs. I'm going to try it out. Hook that in for safety. Now it came with this exciting power cord, typical Japanese fashion. This wire here, you connect to nothing. Don't need to ground it for some reason. And yeah, I don't find many outlets with ground in Japan. So you, pl so if you get a plug that needs ground, you get one of these useful things. You plug that in, and then all of a sudden you don't need ground anymore, and you can plug it into your normal outlet. Recently. It was new power strip day. It was seen on my live stream. I got this exciting one going off topic a bit, but yeah, this is official Alicom brand power strip. It's got magnets on it. But they've put this notch here, which is very convenient, which allows you to plug your grounded plugs into it successfully and not connect the ground to anything. So that's pretty nice. Usually with these you're supposed to join that to a ground screw that you have on the outlet or the power strip, but generally nobody does that. Like that, the ground, and then that can plug in, and then again that one there, and you could double that up onto there if you felt like it. But pretty much whenever you see one of these, it's not connected. People don't connect them generally. So let's do that. Got the power meter here from the other day, and we'll join that up. It's sitting at 101 volts today, that's pretty good. And it's drawing one and a half watts doing nothing, so presumably that's just the standby consumption of this adapter, so it's not particularly good, is it? And I've got some cables here, so we can link these together. So they're not internally connected in any way other than the power, so We'll have to join these up 
to test them all. And I don't have any short BNC cables around, so we're using these. Now the source, nice green wire. What I've got is laser discs. Since it seems everyone plays Evangelion when they're showing off their fancy um, CRT monitors, so I guess we'll do that too. But I don't know if they play laser discs to get that video source, but we will. We'll do it the proper way. Let's juice this up. Uh, so it's gone up to 14 watts. So those middle ones, a bit of viewing angle issue. Brightness of that. Brightness of that one. Let's start this. So the colour looks... Yeah, it's a bit messed up. Oh, it's probably the phase needs adjusting, doesn't it? Do it, put a test pattern on, and then adjust these. Oh, when you pause it, it goes away. Anyway, I was going to pause it on something and try and adjust them. Well, we've proven they work, which is quite nice, and presumably there's enough range in these knobs that they could get you all tuned up and properly color matched. Or maybe that's why it was really cheap, because, yeah, this was bought as unknown condition, untested. Seems fairly power efficient, doesn't it? Only 14 watts for four monitors. That laser disc's very out of balance. So, yeah, four monitors. Let's take it apart and see what's in there. It might not be very interesting, it's because it's just four monitors. <laughs> There'll be some chips. Although the other monitors we looked inside, they were a lot more exciting than I was expecting. They were completely full of stuff. Lots of boards and things. Yeah, I need to get an SDI adapter so we can try that out. Anyway, there's some... These screws have arrows, so presumably those are the ones that you take out to get it apart. It is interesting that there is that there looks like it looks like that panel can come off. Pull that one knob off so that it sits on an even surface when it's resting on the knobs. Let's take this off first just to see what that does. Mm, I guess you're not supposed to take that off because yeah, that doesn't come off by itself. Anyway, we'll leave that loose for now and we'll undo the screws that have the arrows pointing to them. The ones that you're supposed to be undoing. Looks like they're all the same screw type, so that's nice. Makes things much easier. Alright, I don't know which what comes out. It looks like the front middle folds down and it'll have these side brackets and all that, so presumably then the back comes out. Oh yeah, look at that. There is the piece that must have snapped off of that. Or well, part of it. Yeah, so maybe we can fix that by gluing that back together. Now, there's cables that need unplugging. I don't know what they do. Maybe it's a power supply or something? Yeah, it's in in that blank area. Look at that. Yeah, it's something from there. I guess that's the power supply that runs it. Let's unplug all of the... Oh, so that one's got extra stuff that's not fitted on those. Is that the power switch? There's, look at that. Power switch and LED. So these are all the same, but there's a build variant to give the one on the end the power switch. There's also some other kind of wire. Oh, they all have that. 
Maybe that's still backlights. Anyway, let's pull these under all these cables. Let's investigate this first. Oh, so if you undo all of those plugs, then that back piece will be able to come out, I think. Might as well put that back together because it's not going to come off. I want to see what's under these. That's the input power connector. It goes over to there. Is that a copper strip? I wonder if that's where the heatsink or just shielding. Maybe it's shielding. It's probably a switch mode and it won't get interference into the video circuit. It's like some kind of switch mode pass by. Also, relay. Let's take this one off and see if it's the same thing. If all the outputs are in parallel, there's multiple things. There's the cables that go to the displays, there's that and that, and then there's these red ones which go to the back board, the input board. I wonder if that's for powering up the module that you plug in onto that D9. Oh, there's less stuff on that. Okay, so all that business there is related to the power input, which connect, connects onto their fuses and things. And then that, there's presumably two switch modes. That board's quite bent. Double-sided, plated through, but it's that phenolic stuff. And that comes over. It appears that it's just wired in parallel. The wires that went off to the screens are just wired in parallel off to that and then presumably on here because that's just in the same plug at both ends and that's in parallel with the others and I guess that just comes in from there through and it comes in from the power switch which is that which went to that extra plug I can't even see yeah, so it's through the power switch, and then everything's just paralleled up off to the monitors. And then these here, it's like a little integrated switch mode controller -y thing that then goes to these backboards. Maybe it makes 9 volts. Let's all look those up just to check what those are. So it says on there GM7130 A step down switching regulator 3 amp Available in several models as well as adjustable Don't know what one we got here oh, yep, So it's 5, so it says 50 there So it will be 5 volts Okay, so there's little 5 volt regulators that then go to this backboard So presumably this it provides 5 volts out of these connectors for running the auxiliary add-on module things. Might as well put these bits back while we're... I guess it does help a bit of heat dissipation, maybe? I'm not missing anything. Okay, good. And then that one doesn't have the input part. Okay, let's take this apart a bit more just to see what's going on here. So it's an RJ45 jack on the back for that extra I.O. They haven't labelled anything, but that goes to that extra connector. And also to that. Oh, maybe it's a dry contact provided for the uh, tally light. Maybe that's what it needs the 5 volts for. There's just some filtering on there, so that this interference is removed. Or interference can't get in or out. Alright, there's three wires there, because that will be the composite signal, and then the like, Y and C video, video from the D9 connector. Bit of a weird design, I think they could have common, uh, a commonized on the amount of boards used, but maybe there's options for this. Maybe you can get these monitors as a, a standalone individual thing. And that's just for the the height, I guess, of the connector so it doesn't 
stick out too far on the back. Alright then, let's take a look at this. We'll get one of these monitors out and poke it around. There's a row of probably transistors and resistors. It looks like they're bicolor LEDs. I think I read all green. Three of them there. And then there's a light pipe type thing which brings it out to the front. Okay, let's undo some screws and see what happens. Not sure exactly what we need. Now this thing comes apart. There's grounding wires. And those, I think, goes to a thing. Maybe it's not grounding? Or it goes onto this backing. What is that thing though? That's what you can see, sort of see down there. There's some kind of thing in some heat shrink. Uh, I guess we're going to have to do this as well. Get that lug out of the way. Yeah, maybe we should take it an end one off. Maybe we have to take all of them off. There's a really delicate ribbon cable there. Perhaps we should undo that. This must be going into the panel. Well, it seems to be shielding for the backlight. Maybe? Wow. That is weird. Oh, that screw's not even done up. There's a little tiny screw there. And then there's that screw, which is half under the next one. Okay, and well, there's the monitor, the little LCD panel. Let's put this out of the way. Okay, that shield comes off. Okay, that might be the part number. Oh, so it's AUO Optoelectronics LCD panel. There's hairs on it. And then it appears to have two tubes. The backlight. That's really weird. I don't know what's going on inside that. It's just some sort of filter or decoupling thing maybe. That seems to be ground there, which has got two wires. One from there. Which appears to just go through that. Oh, okay. So the backlight is just one tube, which connects between there and there, but along with it comes a ground wire. See, that's just soldered onto the bottom of the frame there, the metalwork. Okay, so it's one tube and then some ground wires. I guess they're just suppressing the switching interference. Yeah, it's probably because there's noise being coupled into the next over monitor or into the stuff that the signals in these from that wire. So they've run a ground and there's probably some kind of shielding thing happening inside there. And then similarly they've run a ground along near that one to reduce interference. I assume it's pretty weird that that's what it looks like going on there. So that's where the panel joins on. They're not labeling much stuff on this, other than designators, which is a bit uncharacteristic for Sony. They would normally give pinouts for everything, like we saw on the other monitor, the other Sony monitor. So that's the power input there. And that goes to this corner here, where there's a bunch of power supply looking things. Some sort of transformer. And then we've got some chips. Oh yeah, so that's where the screen joins on, so that will be some sort of LCD voltage or timing generator thing. Seems to have some sort of coating over these. It looks like it's got selective conformal coating only on the ICs. Which is a bit weird, because normally you'd put it on the surface mount resistors, because those can go bad from the humidity. But for some reason they've just put it on ICs. It's like it's just a label stuck on around that light pipe thing. Anyway, we've got a chip there, a USP-015, perhaps we'll look that up, just for fun, see if it comes up with anything, is it, that was USP, wasn't it, it's, no, UPS, yeah, it's a TFT LCD controller, LSI, yeah, I can't get much information about that, other than the description, and then we got a, a sharp, it's one of those standard composite video decoder thingies. IR3Y29. 
So it's a video interface IC for LCD driver. Video interface IC for use with digital TFT look crystal equipment. And it can import composite YC analog RGB. It supports 800 by 480 dots, 16 by 9. Yeah. I guess I should overlay the data sheet anyway. You can look that up if, if you feel so and read all about that chip. That and the variants of that are found in most things that have a uh, an LCD with a video, composite video or similar analog video input. And so there's nothing on the back of that. So that must be the part number of the LCD then. That was just in a frame. It just sits there like that. And so that's the top normally because of the telly light at the top. Yeah, little compact video monitor thing. 12 volt input. This video and composite inputs there. Oh yes, and we can see the extra. That's the one that's got the power switch. There's the power switch connector. Just like that. And uh, look that there. Oh yeah, there. Where the power LED will go. Something else there, I think it's just some wires or well, some sort of unused pads by the look of it. Don't know if this has a middle layer. Might do. Oh, that might just be the glass, the fiberglass that makes it look like there's tracks running vertically there. I don't think so, it's probably just a double sided board. It's pretty hard to know. Well, is there a track coming off that wire there going under where those designators are? Doesn't look like it, but. When you look on this side, it's definitely in there. It's just that the light isn't coming from the wrong side here. Yeah. We turn on a light below it. Yeah, see there is a track coming off of it. And I'm pretty sure that is internal. Yeah, so there is internal layers in this. Because you can see there the track coming off that pad from the backlight and it's not on the outside there, it's internal and it's in can be seen there quite faintly. I think it's closer to this side. So it'll be a four layer board. It's interesting because I put planes on the outside as well, so maybe it signals on the inside or there might be a solid ground on the inside. Pretty common. Solid ground on mid one, power on mid two, signals on the outside. Alright. Maybe that's all we need to look at on that. Let's see if we can get this thing back together and not wreck it in the process. Oh, that screw is broken off there. That's a shame. Maybe that's funny. that would be why it's loose because yeah, it's snapped out for some reason. Maybe it's been rough treated at some point. Well, it definitely has because all those knobs are missing their little knobbies. At least it's all still, well, was all still going. Maybe we should pull that one out now because it's going to be hard to pull out later, isn't it? Is there any other ones we should pull out? No. Okay, that's good. Which way around does that thing go like that? Okay, all four screws hold that sheet on. Oh yeah, there's the edge of that screw hole that's snapped out. Oh, wait a minute, did I do that right? The... The... The ring terminal is supposed to be under the shield so that it connects to the thing properly. And that one goes on it because it's got an uninsulated part. Okay, well that went together pretty easy. Now we'll just see if we can get this ribbon back in. At least it's got some good length on it. It seems to be in far enough. See, these other ones aren't even in the whole way, are they? That's not even. Not even our. Is that better? I think so. Ah, oh, that needs. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's back together. Okay, let's screw this back panel thing back on. Okay, connect up the wires. And then finally, before we 
shut it up. We go and put these top ones on, which is the power inputs to each monitor. Okay, we can put the casing back together. Just loosely put that in. And we'll just power it up and we'll just make sure that they are still functioning. I haven't ruined anything in the process. Let's see. Yes, looks like promising. Yes, got the menu there. Good. I guess if you plug it in the output, it still works. It'll just be brighter because it will disable the terminate at the same time. Yeah, look at that. Uh, yeah, so you can get the signal on, then push it in further to disable the terminator. Anyway, so those are all still good, which is good because we want to destroy this nice thing. I'll just finish putting it back together. Screws don't really feel like good JIS screws. It's a little bit on the mushy side in the, with the screwdriver. They're definitely supposed to be smaller though. Yeah, so there's different models of these multi-monitor rack mount things you can get. Three monitor ones, dual monitor widescreen. There you go, good quad monitor doofy. And while we're here, if you ever wanted to see what's inside one of those really expensive Microsoft keyboards with the fingerprint reader on one of the keys? Well, there you go. There is that's the Bluetooth aerial there. This chip, whatever that is, the scanning thing, fingerprint scanner, got some kind of little IC in the wire there, or in the flex. The uh, fingerprint inator, and then that plugs into the main board there. Something under there, another chip of some sort. And yeah, another one there. A little oscillator. Oh, that must just be a Bluetooth device, and that must be a CPU, so an oscillator. Then there's a connector somewhere. Connected there. That goes to the back half. We've got the battery and a little board there with the hey. Little board there with the the USB connector and then that comes over onto there with a the wire and then there's the switch there oh, what's going on? there's the switch there and all that does is it presses down on this thing which is just a little momentary button that's quite annoying because now the case is open it can't uh, yeah it won't push that switch so it won't turn on so the reason why I took this apart is I thought the battery was swelling up Oh, look, the fingerprint thing there was glued to the bottom of the housings. That must have got ripped open when I... So the reason I took it apart is because there was a bulge in there. You can still see it a little bit. It was squidgy when you pressed it. And for some dumb reason, I thought the battery was in there and swelling up. But of course the battery's in this. Like, why would it be in that bit? And how can you get a battery that thin? Well, you can get batteries that thin, but... Yeah, so I thought the battery was swelling up in there because of the way the case was bulging and bouncy. So I cracked it all open to investigate and found yeah, it's not the battery. It must have just had some stress in the plastic in the way that it was put together originally. Because it's just this kind of green, this green colored glue all the way around the edge. And also all the way around the edge of that part, so that electronics part gets completely separated. I'm wondering if that means this is washable. Full of hairs and stuff, as you'd expect from a keyboard. Yeah, I was using this for quite a while before that, a like couple of years, three years before it started bulging out. The most annoying thing about the keyboard is it doesn't have the standard space between these keys, so you can't just find it by touching very easily. So I always found I'm pushing the wrong thing, but yeah. The good thing about this keyboard is you can run it off the USB just as a normal plug-in keyboard, which is so much better than the annoying wireless stuff which always goes to sleep and then misses 
the first few characters when you start typing. It's so annoying that. No, absolutely no reason to have a wireless keyboard, but all the nice keyboards these days seem to be wireless. So I'm going to try gluing it back together now that I know that there's no problem. I thought it's probably a good idea to put this glue out first so that it goes together far enough and then we'll put some super glue in there. Probably not a good idea, but that's what I've got. The epoxy stuff that I had before has run out. I want it to fit together quite tightly again. So I'm concerned that it might not glue against glue again. Might not glue together hard enough to press the power switch enough. So we want to make sure that that is done properly. By getting rid of all the old glue that could hold it up in the air for some reason. If it's not quite lined up properly. Okay, I got some glue. Some super glue. And we'll have a go with this. Really the most important thing is gluing it by the switch because that's what that's what matters. So if I turn it on, that light starts pulsing there. Oh, it did once. So that means that it's kind of ready to go. That the wire is plugged in, which is important. We don't want to glue it together and then go, oh, we forgot to plug the wire in. And also I noticed, uh, also I noticed there's a little spring there. And that's for grounding the, the USB connector. What are we actually going to put the glue on? And how are we going to prevent it from wrecking everything? I'm just going to put some on the corners. The problem is the outgassing from the super glue ends up wrecking things. Okay, let's see if this does anything useful. It's got to be held down for a period of time. Push on it for a couple of minutes and then hopefully that will be us done. And hopefully it doesn't glue any of the keys down in the process. Good super glue will just immediately adhere as soon as it it um, gets pushed down. You can already see that bulge there is still there. Oh well. Yeah, it's not going to stick itself down there. Very well then, I think this video is done. We looked in the monitors. That was actually what we were, came here to do, not play with a keyboard. But it was just sitting there and looked interesting anyway. Great.